I recently read the book Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. Um, what it boils down to, according to Brene, is one of the most important things she learned in her, during her decade of research, is that if she roughly took the people that she interviewed and divided them into uh, two different groups, so who had one, one group was who had a really sense of worthiness, that's what it comes down to, um, a strong sense of love and belonging, and, so, and folks that struggle for it, uh, people that are always wondering if they're good enough. There's only one variable between those people that had a sense of belonging and the people that were struggling for it. And that was that people who have a sense of strong sense of sense of love and belonging, they are they, they, they think they're worthy of love and belonging. That's it. They think they're worthy. So what she found that people that had in common was a sense of courage. So courage, the original definition of courage uh, from comes from the Latin to work, cur, mean heart. So uh, the original thing is to tell the story with your whole heart. So these folks had the courage to be imperfective. They had the compassion to be kind to themselves first and then to others, because you can't compassion to you know uh, you can't show compassion to other people if you don't feel compassionate with yourself. And the last was that they had connection as a result of authenticity. So they were willing to let go of who they should be and just be themselves. And you really have to do that for connection. So the other thing they had in common was this. Um, they fully embraced vulnerability. They, they believed that what made them vulnerable made them beautiful. They didn't talk about vulnerability being comfortable or or being excruciating, as, as she, she heard earlier in, in people that talked about shame. They just talked about it being necessary. They talked about the willingness of saying, I love you first, the willingness to do something where there was no guarantees, the willingness to breathe through waiting the doctor to call to, for an anagram, the willingness to invest in a relationship that may or may not wake out, work out. They thought this was fundamental. So vulnerability was the core of shame and fear and a struggle for worthiness, but it's also the birthplace of joy, of creativity, of belonging and love. So let ourselves be seen, be deeply seen, vulnerably seen. To love with our whole hearts, even if there's no guarantee. And that's really hard, you know, especially as a parent, you, to practice gratitude and joy uh, even in those moments, you know, can I can I love you this much? Can I can I can I do this? Is it safe? And instead of you know, instead of thinking that, just thinking, uh, I'm so grateful. Because when I'm vulnerable, it means I'm alive. And the most important thing is believing that we're enough. Because if you come from a place that says that you believe that you're enough, then you stop screaming and start listening. And we're kinder and gently to the people around us and we're kinder and gently to gentler to ourselves. So her book starts with a quote from Theodore Roosevelt, delivered in 1910. Uh, and she said this was the passage that made the speech famous. Quote, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or uh, the doer of deeds can have done better. The credit belongs to the man who actually is in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strikes value, who errs or comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasm and great devotions and steps himself to a worthy cause? Who has the best, knows in the ends, has the triumph of high achievement and at worth, if he fails, at least fails whilst daring greatly. Uh, so that idea that she started with, so that's idea of wholeheartedness, wholehearted living instead of half-hearted living, you know, what's that like? So you're all in it, you, you, you're you in the arena uh, and she, she saw that people were overwhelmed with shame or weakness, but not everyone, some people live wholeheartedness. And there was three different art aspects of that. One, they were courageous. So uh, courage, compassion, and connection. So they were courageous. They were willing to put themselves out there. They were compassionate. 
they weren't they, they realized they weren't the only ones <laughs> uh, and we all fall short again and again and again and we all have different manifestations of that and we all struggle with different things and we all we still take risks and then the third aspect then then we can connect so if we're you know disconnected or alienated then we would we need to demonstrate our courage in order for other people to be able to demonstrate them theirs so that those are the three parts of wholehearted living uh, so let's talk about the paradox of vulnerability so basically debunks the myths of vulnerability so the number one myth of vulnerability is that vulnerability is weakness right <laughs> vulnerability is not weakness and uh, vulnerability is courageous and she talks about the paradox of vulnerability the paradox of vulnerability is very straightforward how she talks about it is so i admire someone else's vulnerability so when when in her ted talk so please watch the ted talk it's amazing uh when she talks about her breakdown her vulnerability uh she only jokingly talks about like oh no it wasn't a breakdown it was a spiritual awakening and you know i admire that i i admire her saying that she's not perfect Right? I really feel connected when I see that. It's courageous of her when I see that in her. But then, if I think about my own vulnerability to, to you or to anyone else, I, I feel it as a weakness, right? So that's the weird paradox. We see it some, for someone else as courageous, and we hate it from ourselves. We see it as a weakness. So, courage in them, weakness in us. That's the paradox. So, when we are able to be courageous, and be compassionate and live wholeheartedly. Yeah. So one one thing that we can change in ourselves is when we uh, the other thing is the, the vulnerability hangovers. So as she 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 talks about her amazing story when she did her first TED talk, uh, when she when she talked about the, to a million people, you know she can't she couldn't believe that she just shared that and she couldn't get out of bed, and then you know she. She wanted her husband to break into the TED Talk uh, company and retrieve the video because she was just so ashamed of a million people seeing her being vulnerable. You know, instead of hundreds of people in the TED Talk, millions of people saw it because it had over 11 million views online. It was amazing. So uh, with that, being vulnerable, sh seeing her weaknesses, she shared her message with millions of people and transformed their lives. So that's the paradox of vulnerability. So what do you do with the people in the stands? The people who are not in the arena. You know, if you're in the arena, you've got dust in your face, but what what are the people that are in the stands that are casting aspersions to you? You know, that they're, you know, what do you do with them? First, we appreciate the fact that there's a lot of people in the arena with us. And, you know, let's start with gratitude for them. And all those people around us that, that do believe in us. They're in the stands. They're there with us. So we need to embrace them wholeheartedly and show gratitude for them. Um, and just distance ourselves from the people in the crowd. So uh, like uh, Aurelius uh, talks about this, why should I care about the opinion of somebody who doesn't, like, doesn't even like himself if they don't like me? So if they don't even have a good opinion of themselves, I don't care if they have a good opinion of me. You know, the, if if they're in the stands and not in the arena, they're going to project their their failure onto you. So the people who are in the arena, they're the last ones to be hypercritical because they know they're there. They see you. They know it's hard. You know, so they're not going to be critical. The people who are in the stands who haven't chosen, you know, uh, one of her friends quoted. Uh, ignore those people. You're not the jackass whisperer, right? Just let it be. So, um, hope, big aspect of wholehearted living. How do we cultivate hope is a key uh, act uh, aspect. And the most important thing is hope can be learned. Hope can be cultivated. So how do we do that? Number one. You have to have goals. You have to have a future you're excited about. So you actually have to have something that you can dare greatly towards. 
So what are your goals? Uh, set them realistic, but stretch them out. Just set goals that fire you up. And then number two, how are you going to get there? You know, create your path. Persist. Uh, even if you hit obstacles. So it doesn't mean you, you know, just, just pick yourself up, dust yourself off, pursue your path, and achieve your goals. So this is basically a core message that I gathered from this amazing book, uh, Darren Greatly by Brene Brown. Uh, highly recommend it. Thank you for watching and have a productive day.